AU Community Webinar Series. I'm joined by Ahmed Adzabi. So We're going to be talking about the petroleum industry and its future. Yes. I think the first question that we ought to start with is, when is the oil going to run out? Yes, this is a very common question I hear uh, all around the world, globally. How much do you think uh, have we produced uh, from the oil reservoirs, a percentage? It's like approximately 15%. So you can imagine that a huge amount of oil is still underground for us to extract and produce. This is in addition to the yet uh, the reservoirs that we are yet to discover. So you can see that there is still a huge amount of oil that is still uh, underground uh, for us to produce, as well as uh, the oil is not running out soon. I, I'll say there is a study recently done by ExxonMobil stating that at least in the next 20 years we're still going to rely on uh, oil as an energy source. However, I think this misconception about oil running out, I think it stems from the fact that uh, oil products are generally thought to be used purely for energy. And this is not the case. Uh, oil, the oil uh, future is uh, uh, diverging to other uh, types of uh, uh, products such as petrochemicals and medicines which are more profitable for us at the petroleum industry uh, to uh, to use our oil products on those uh, sectors instead of using it purely for energy. So petroleum engineering then has a real future still? Yes, especially here in UAE because mm -hmm. it's the largest industry in Abu Dhabi. One of the things that we hear a lot about these days is about green energy and renewable energy. How does that come into play in the petroleum industry, oil and gas? That's, that's not a renewable energy form. Yes, yes. This is why in the petroleum industry, we encourage renewable energy. Mm. As I stated earlier, we want to use oil products for other things other than uh, uh, energy. We, we support renewable energy. Many misconceptions comes from the fact that since uh, uh, people think that we use oil as energy and uh, soon it will be replaced by renewable energy. We want this to happen because we want to use oil for other uh, products. <laughs> so not only are we saving the planet in the sense that we're not going to be polluting it anymore, but actually we're going to make more business sense exactly. using the oil from the ground for different things. Yes, exactly. And since we got uh, to the topic of environment, uh, many don't know the fact that the petroleum industry spent, uh, invests a lot of uh, money uh, for uh, minimizing the environmental uh, footprints of our industry. A very common uh, uh, factor that we are always challenged with is the fact uh, that uh, what about CO2 emissions? Mm. But people don't know that in the petroleum industry we capture CO2 and we inject it underground to produce more oil. So we are saving the environment and we are also profiting more from the oil uh, production increase. So th this is uh, not uh, well known. Yeah, that's something I didn't know at all. Yeah, this is why we are pro petroleum engineers are here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's also talk then about the, the future of the study itself. So petroleum engineering, I mean, there's still a lot to be learned. There's still a lot of research to be done. Yes, the main challenge with the petroleum industry, which is why I think personally it's the highest uh, paying engineering uh, uh, type of uh, uh, in the industry, is the mm -hmm. fact that we are dealing with, them, with something that we do not see. Okay. It's underground. So how are we going to produce this oil that we do not see? How are we going to model it? Uh, many many people don't know that we are incorporating artificial intelligence. We are we are doing modeling similar to the other engineering. So our approach is very similar to the other engineering, but our application is different. We are dealing with something that we do not see. So this is why uh, when we uh, tackle uh, a field, a reservoir, we try our best to gather as much data as possible, and then we feed it to our models, and then we can try to predict what will happen. This is why uh, our recovery is around 15% because we, are, we do not see what, what's happening uh, there. But we are trying our best to forecast what's happening, what should we do, and uh, we try to avoid because uh, uh, an oil system underground, it's not a simple system of oil well, similar to water well, which is just uh, water and then we produce it. It actually has water, oil, and gas. So uh, it's very uh, complex. And our target as a petroleum engineer is not to produce anything that uh, comes with us. No, we have to make sure that we produce oil 
because gas is light, we can produce it very easily. But oil, we need the reservoir pressure to be high so that we can produce this oil. So if we produce the gas first, the pressure in the reservoir or the energy, it will be lowered. So the oil will be very harder to produce. So this is where our engineering comes into play. But like I always say, uh, it's an engineer first, you are a problem solver, and then you are majoring in petroleum engineering. So we are not limited to just the petroleum industry, like many questions that I get. So all of those skills can be applied to different engineering disciplines, is what yes. you're saying? Yes. I think then that one of the areas we need to touch on a little bit more is you've mentioned that an oil well has more than just oil in it yes. and you need to make sure you're getting the oil out. Yeah. So what I'm assuming then is the models and the artificial intelligence techniques that you use, one of those predictions is what exactly is in that well and what proportion of each different thing is there, is what I'm trying to say. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, exactly. And what happens is the uh, reservoir is more complex than that because, okay. because uh, we, uh, the reservoir is, is it's rocks, so it is, it's not uniform, it's very heterogeneous. So we may produce from this uh, well, and uh, we produce from another well. Uh, from our prediction, we don't see any problem. But then we start to notice that one of the wells started to produce water. Uh, so what is happening there? So we get an idea that maybe there is a fracture that connects the oil to the water aquifer. So it's causing a problem where the oil is seeping. Because of the complexity of the reservoir itself, uh, many fractures sometimes connect the, the phases that we have uh, that will complex this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, production of oil. So forgive the very basic question then, but the oil is in the rocks. It's not like there's a hole in the ground full of oil and water and gas. It's in the rocks themselves. Yes, and that's it is stored out, between, right? between the spaces between the rocks. Right. Yeah. That complicates things a lot more then, doesn't it? It is, it, it is, it is. <laughs> Which kind of explains why you're so well paid. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Tell me then, what are the job opportunities in this field for petroleum engineers? Petroleum engineers have many types of uh, uh, opportunities in the petroleum industry because petroleum engineer is just, it's not just petroleum engineer. Mm. You can be uh, divided into an engineer in the different phases of the petroleum system. So for example, you can be a reservoir engineer where you will be modeling and working on managing the reservoir underground. You can be working on uh, a well, in, uh, well engineer where you will be designing the well itself that we will be using to, pro to deliver the oil to the surface. Right. Right, so you design the well that then the people in the field would put into the ground to bring the oil up? Yes. Okay. Yes. And we need to make sure that it's produced for as, as many years as possible. Yeah. And uh, the other type of uh, 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 that, that are involved in the petroleum engineer is operational engineer who will be operating the oil from the source, from the, uh, let's say, from the well itself till we ship it and sell it. So you can see it's uh, the opportunities are divided into uh, mainly different uh, sectors uh, around the petroleum cycle. But in addition to that, uh, those cycles are further divided. Like for example, in reservoir engineering where we are managing the reservoir, we have the reservoir engineer and we have the simulation engineer yeah. who are going to work on the modeling of this. Mm -hmm. So in, a, in, a, in, another, in other words, many types of, uh, we will specialize in the different aspects of, the, uh, of those uh, phases, let's say, and then we'll be working together to make sure that we are uh, doing the best we can to produce from this oil economically. Uh, and we get uh, uh, maximum returns on our investments. Because in the petroleum industry, a single well, uh, mm -hmm. it cost uh, to drill this well around uh, uh, millions. So it is not uh, really cheap. And we need to make sure that this investment, we, we recover uh, from this investment. So there's plenty of areas that you can get involved in. Which one did you pick? Uh, for me, I got a job opportunity as a production engineer. Okay. So my job is to ensure that we have no problem producing this oil, delivering it from the reservoir till the surface. So this is my job because it's uh, because sometimes we can face some issue with some restrictions, some uh, problems. So we, my job is uh, to ensure that. But uh, that does not mean I'm not involved in other projects that are relevant to reservoir engineers. Mm -hmm. So. 
in another words, uh, uh, sometimes we, we work on uh, this aspect, but we are involved in other aspects as well. Also, I want to touch upon, and uh, this is a question I got yesterday from one of my uh, colleagues yeah. uh, in university, is that are we limited to just the petroleum industry? Uh, or in other words, in UAE, are we limited to just ADNOC? And if ADNOC doesn't employ us, are we uh, finished? We, are, we will not be working? <laughs> so uh, uh, it's a very common question. Uh, uh, but they are not aware about ADNOC uh, in-country value program, okay. which is ADNOC, when they are working or operating on a field, sometimes they request a service or a project from other uh, companies. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, they offer this uh, project to them and then uh, the companies will offer uh, their uh, resources. They will say we have these resources and these are our costs. Mm -hmm. So ADNOC will, will look into, into the different uh, companies that have offered their jobs. They will look into two things, cost and in-country value. So what is in-country value? how many locals have this company employed. Okay. So this encourages the other companies uh, in the petroleum industry to employ petroleum engineers in, uh, in UAE. Yeah. Uh, moreover, and this is from my experience, when I worked uh, in ADNOC as an internship student, I actually got two job offers, one of them in software engineering and the data management, which is very irrelevant to petroleum engineering. Yeah and also an asset integrity, which is more of a mechanical department where we deal with the risk, maintenance, inspection. So, so this is why I stated earlier, we are engineer first, we are problem solver, and then we, we are focusing on petroleum aspect. But the methodology overall, it's not that uh, divergent, mm -hmm. I'll say. I think that's a very important point to make, and it also shows how diverse your skills are, that they can be applied to pretty much anything in the engineering world. That's exactly. great for job security and opportunities in the future. Yes. Let's close then and um, discuss how your studies have helped you and at what point in your studies did you start to think, yes, this is absolutely what I want to go into? Yes, so uh, to be honest, when I first joined the uh, Khalifa University, it was a Petroleum Institute. Uh, so I joined uh, Petroleum Engineering, uh, uh, caught my eyes because it's the first time I hear about it. So what is this? Like, uh, I've heard about mechanical engineering, chemical engineering. So I decided to enroll with it because either ways, I have a chance to change my major later on. Yeah. Uh, during my first uh, freshman year, I started to interact more with the department, learn more about what they are doing. And then I have noticed that they, are, uh, they, are, they have an integral part of the program, uh, which are uh, geoscience or geology, uh, geological studies. So prior to, to university, I had no idea what geology is all about. I never studied it in high school. So I was uh, a bit hesitant. Yeah. So, and I was leaning towards going to chemical engineering because it's more of uh, relevant to my interest at that time, which is chemi uh, chemistry and even biology. So, uh, and then uh, when I, we got the sessions, I said, okay, let's try going and taking some of the uh, major uh, uh, discipline uh, courses. And uh, slowly, it start, I started to, to understand the fundamentals. I started to find it very interesting. Like, uh, and this is, uh, I have to say, it's thanks to the department who takes the time to encourage us and, and make those topics very interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I have learned a very, very uh, uh, interesting thing is the fact that chemistry is applied in many aspects in the petroleum industry, as well as biology. In some of the newer uh, techniques to produce more oil, we use microbial to insert them there to try to produce more oil. This is uh, yani one of the newer uh, uh, techniques that is done, as well as in, uh, in injecting some of the chemicals as well. So you can see this is where I found a huge interest in yeah. it. Yeah. So bringing everything that you were interested in before to a new area yes. that you didn't think would have those exactly. applications in the first place. Exactly. That's brilliant. Exactly. And this is why petroleum engineering is more diverse than people think. Yeah, totally. And Tell me then, one last thing, what advice would you give to anybody thinking about studying petroleum engineering or anybody who is currently studying that? My advice would be to do your own research, uh, read more about it. Uh, it's not uh, like what, what you heard, uh, some of them maybe it's not uh, uh, as uh, true as uh, you would think it is. For example, a common comparison I get a lot is 
what about what's the difference between oil cars and electric cars? Yeah. Electric cars are uh, obviously a better choice in terms of uh, pollution, etc. But they don't know that uh, the the batteries that are used in those electric cars are made of silicon that needs a huge uh, uh, digging uh, to extract. So. Mm -hmm. There are uh, uh, environmental uh, footprints from those cars as well, but they don't see it uh, directly. They just associate oil with pollution. Right. Yeah, this is why even and when I present a presentation, I always represent oil barrels as green barrels because it's energy. It is uh, uh, to for us to uh, attend uh, or for us to uh, get luxuries in our life, mm -hmm. living, uh, increasing our living standards. So there really is a future for this industry then? Yes. Uh, so uh, recently, uh, in 29th of uh, March this year, Adnok made history when they started uh, selling uh, Morban oil, which is our, uh, let's say, uh, trademark in, uh, in Adnok, which is a very high quality uh, sweet oil. So you can see that uh, even uh, Adnok is still uh, in a good uh, position in terms of uh, the energy industry. Mm -hmm. Still developing, still innovating, yes. there's absolutely a future here. Yes, and it is diversifying also into other cleaner energies, such as hydrogen energies. And these are all from what, uh, what I have read in their uh, uh, social media. So mm -hmm. if, we, if you keep up with them, you will notice that they, we're not focusing on just the, the oil uh, uh, products. And we are not saying, no, we are switching to renewable energies because oil is finishing. <laughs> There's plenty of opportunities still then, and you'd absolutely recommend that people go into this kind of study? Yes, it is the highest uh, or the largest uh, industry in UAE. And it is uh, very important in, our, uh, in the development of our resources in UAE. Uh, one, one fact also I want to share is that uh, many people are not aware that if we stop oil right now, like all around the world, many, many industries will, will suffer, especially the food industry because a byproduct from uh, production of oil is sulfur, which are used as fertilizers in the food industry. Oh, okay. Yeah, and also uh, 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 cars, the the tires, they are made of oil products or byproducts. So you can see that it is integrated into other industries as well. So it's not as simple as we need to stop oil and gas production to save the planet. Exactly. We have all of these things that rely on the byproducts of this energy production. Exactly. And it is very interesting to see that uh, people are not really aware about these uh, uh, aspects. Ahmed, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me.